Hey guys, it's me Dante here at Ferrigno Freedom Channel. Just glad to be able to come back and talk to you guys. I wanted to share with you a little bit about these short ribs I've been working on here. But you know, I've had a lot of other things on my mind too as I answer a lot of your comments. So I'm hoping I can address several things at one time in one video. Uh, because I know a lot of you have been asking me to make some more videos where you're making something to eat, Dante. Come on, we want to see the food. I've been working on these short ribs since yesterday. As a matter of fact, I put them in the pot yesterday around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It might have been closer to 3. I'm really bad about paying attention to those things because so many things in my life are just moving so fast all the time. Whether I'm going to work or I'm dealing with the kids or dealing with my wife or dealing with bills and finances and legal issues and whatever else is going on. I mean, there's always something in life, isn't there? It's sometimes hard to track things as well as I would like. You know, and that's one of the things about this diet that ultimately, a lot of times I wind up getting in the weeds on some of these things because really, it's the simplicity of this diet that makes it so easy. I don't think it's necessarily the diet that everybody needs. And I think that's where a lot of the confusion comes in when I get questions about, why aren't you eating eggs? Why aren't you eating fish? Why aren't you having bacon and, and chicken and things like that? I forget that there's thousands of people who watch my channel that are aware of my, my starting this diet but a lot of you have joined since the beginning and maybe you haven't seen my journey from the beginning. I strongly encourage you to go through the videos that I have in my playlist that talks about coming with me on my journey because that'll take you from the very beginning all the way up until now. And I've created separate playlists for different things like food that I cook and for things like interviews and shorts and I have several different playlists. But that one about coming with me on my journey is so important for anybody who is seeing the results that I'm experiencing and wanting those results for themselves. Everybody has a different reason why they come to carnivore way of eating. And the particular carnivore way of eating that I'm used to is called lion diet. Well, lion diet specifically allows for ruminant animals. Ruminant animals are those animals that have multi-chambered stomachs that are designed to separate out those toxins that come in the grass that they're built to eat. And I know I've pointed out there are a lot of other factors that go into the cattle raising industry. And some of you have even given me some grief about why I harp on grass-fed, grass-finished beef. And I can understand why. A huge portion of grass-fed beef that's available on the market, just because it's grass-fed, doesn't mean it's grass-fed the proper way. I have been lucky enough to find a rancher that raises his beef immaculately. Those cows are always eating tall grass. They're not chewing the grass all the way down to the ground. They don't get worms as a result of that. They're getting plenty of carbohydrates, which they need to be fatty and to give you the meat that you want to eat that's got that fat in it that you can get those energy stores out of. And a lot of grass-fed meat isn't raised that way. And I also want to point out that the entire time that I started doing lion diet, back on January 14th of 2021, those first seven, eight, nine months, I can't remember exactly was when I first started having grass-fed beef from Big Mo Cattle, almost all of my gains, all of my losses, I should say, when it comes to weight loss and health recovery have come on grain-fed meat. So I don't want to discourage anybody from eating grain-fed meat because grain-fed meat got me to where I was. I don't want to discourage anybody who's on a budget that's really tight from being able to start a carnivore way of eating if you can get away from the refined sugars and the carbohydrates and the seed oils, otherwise known as vegetable oils, you're gonna be doing yourself a world of good. And because I don't explain this in every single video that I make, it does tend to create a little bit of confusion out there in the community. So I wanted to address that real quick and kind of dispel some of the mysteries there. The reason I'm doing lion diet specifically is because my problem was not, I mean, granted, I did lose a lot of weight and that's the most striking thing that most people notice because that's what I put in my intro. I want you to see the change. I mean, the picture side by side really kind of shows the drastic difference in my health right in one photo. But the problem that I was dealing with was not visible on the surface. I had a gut problem. I had something going on where I had so much pain here that doctors had no answers for that I chose to do lion diet. When I wasn't getting any answers from doctors, I decided 
Maybe this is my answer. I'm gonna give it a shot. And I decided that I'm gonna go in it full force from the beginning. I'm gonna go ahead and get all the meat that I need. I'm gonna make sure that I got a bunch of meat made because I knew from previous experience on doing a low carb diet that the biggest thing that causes you to fail is not having something ready to eat. But then a lot of people will also ask me about, well, if I start eating this way, should I do it cold turkey? Should I go straight from what I'm eating to this? I can't answer all of those questions in a general video, but I can try to give you some of those things right now. And hopefully when I'm able to do coaching soon, I'll be able to address your needs individually. It's really hard to answer some of these questions in comments because people say, should I just go cold turkey lion diet? There's a lot of factors that are involved into whether or not you should. Some things that I've researched a lot of, some things that I've researched a little of, probably some things that I don't even know about that might be important to consider. So all I can say is, is when I'm offering advice, I can only really speak to the experience that I've had. The other things I can speak about are the things that I research and I do a lot of research. I didn't do a lot of research the first couple of years on this because it was just easy for me to make that switch. Some of the things that probably made it easy for me is that I didn't come from already drinking sodas every day, for instance. So I wasn't guzzling down high amounts of fructo high fructose corn syrup. And I think that's a big factor for people's craving issues. I was already drinking things that use stevia and uh, artificial sweeteners, thinking that those were okay for me. But I've come to find out that those have their negative side effects too. And one of the amazing things I've been able to do is overcome that tendency that a lot of people have to say, well, I should treat myself to something sugary and sweet every once in a while. How often can I have something that is sugary and sweet? Well, the question is very similar to asking an addict of any particular drug. I'm not going to name any particular drugs here because it causes problems with the algorithm. But if you've got somebody that's coming off of a drug and sugar is a very difficult drug to kick, you're going to want any excuse you can to have that stuff. And ultimately, it's only a treat because it gives you a dopamine kick at the moment. And it makes you feel a little better for a moment. But the bad thing about it is, is it sucks you back down to a place that's lower than you were before you started seeking that dopamine kick. It takes you to a lower level of anxiety or depression or just general discomfort with life that comes occasionally. I mean, we all face it. We all have those moments where we're anxious or wanting to have something out of the normal. And I get them too, don't get me wrong. From somebody who used to be a sweet junkie that I loved sweets, even though I thought I was limiting myself at one time, they weren't doing me one bit of good. And cutting them out of my life has been the best thing I've ever done. Do I still stumble occasionally? Yes. Usually it's due to just the general accessibility of those foods when I live in a house full of people who are still addicted to those things. And though my family has made tremendous strides to get their health more in order by cutting some of these things out, it's still an uphill battle, as I'm sure it is for most of you. If you want to have answers from me, I'll do my best to answer them in the comments. Honestly, the comments have gotten to the point now where I cannot keep up with them. I still spend many times hours just answering comments as best I can, but I can't get to everyone that way. And that's why I'm looking into doing the coaching side of this. This has become my calling, and I'm hoping that I can continue to help people get healthy. Meanwhile, I'm glad to keep producing free content right here on YouTube. I also have a channel on Rumble, for those of you who are not aware. Uh, I'm also on Locals, though I haven't posted very much there yet. I think I only have my very first video there. Now on Rumble, everything that I have on YouTube is available on Rumble as well, because when I upload it to YouTube, it automatically goes to Rumble also. We'll see how that goes in the near future. Meanwhile, back to these short ribs. I put these short ribs in the pot yesterday at around three o'clock and I set them on high. And I'm gonna show you some footage as we go of what I did when I put them in there. I added some of my favorite Redmond smoke salt and then I put the Irish butter that they sell at Aldi. I kind of just do that because I love that flavor. I've been noticing that I don't get many troubles when I just eat Irish butter. Video editing Dante here, and I do want to add one thing about butter for me. And I should have remembered this because I even talked to Dr. Barry about it when I went to KetoCon. The one thing about me and butter 
is it tends to add this hoarseness to my voice because it has been worse whenever I eat butter. It's something I have a hard time avoiding because it doesn't cause any other problems that I'm aware of, except it makes my voice worse. And especially this past week, since Katie's been doing carnivore, I've been adding a lot of butter to the things, and I've been sneaking a lot more butter than I normally do. There's nothing wrong with that fat. It's great for your system. But like Dr. Barry told me, is that even when you make butter, you see a lot of the buttermilk comes out, not all of it comes out. And some of that buttermilk is still in the butter, and I'm just so sensitive that that's the thing that's causing the hoarseness. I can live with that. I've also found that pasture-raised eggs, by the way, don't give me the issues that, say, other store-bought eggs do. And I think it has to do with what the animals are eating. A lot of that is just trial and error stuff that I've been able to go through and find out what works for me and what doesn't. The point of lion diet, though, is not just to be eating this way for the rest of your life. The point is to be able to eliminate all the things that are causing you problems and then hopefully be able to add some of those things back later. I've just found it to be very difficult for me to add much of anything and ultimately experimenting causes me so much pain and grief I'd just rather not experiment. So I'm going to stick with the beef that does good for me. Take a look at this. Let me show you this meat. This is after sitting in the crock pot for roughly 12 hours on low. And then around 4 o'clock in the morning, I got up and I turned it down to warm. So these have been sitting long enough for me to touch comfortably. But you can see they just pull apart like, like cotton candy. And this actually brings up another question that I've had a few people ask me about eating fat. You know, some people just can't do eating fat. I don't know what the reasons are that we, we've decided we can't, or maybe it's the texture. Whatever the reason is, I can tell you this. I used to revile fat. I thought eating fat was horrible because I had been told all my life, this is what makes you fat, and this is what causes heart disease and so many other things. But now, I'll gladly eat the fat because one, I know the energy is located in that fat. The meat is great too. Protein's great for my body. It helps me to put on muscle mass and to keep in great shape. If I could get to the point where I can look at a chunk of fat like this and be totally fine, mm, just eating a huge portion of gelatinous feeling fat, that used to be something that would just I would be disgusted by. But now it's the opposite. And I think it's because in our minds, we convince ourselves that certain things are bad. I had the same reaction with salt because when I heard that I had to do a lot of salt, I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to give it a try because I had no other option and it worked out for me. If you don't have that moment in your life that tells you you've got to do something different or you're going to die, which is where I was when I started this diet, it might be hard to overcome some of those things like an aversion to salt or an aversion to meat or an aversion to fat. But ultimately, I think most people are going to find that if you give it a try, if you really put the effort in to see if this way of living, this way of eating is going to help cure some of your issues, is going to help you heal your body and your mind, you'll find that it actually is much better than you thought. thing about having these short ribs in the crock pot, especially when my wife has been joining me on this carnivore way of eating, is just fantastic because like today, she had a surprise that, you know, she, she didn't, she wasn't able to get to everything she wanted to do and she hasn't eaten anything. And now here she's got to rush out and I've got some meat ready for her to take with her. I had some bacon and eggs for breakfast. Oh yeah. Well, you know, you still need food for the day. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. You want a cap for it so you can keep yes. it covered when you get done? Just in case. Let's see, what's today? So you've been doing this for almost two weeks now. Mm -hmm. Almost. All right, thank you. Love you. Love you too. Well, now that she's gone out with her mother to go get the boys and do some shopping they got to do in town, look at this. This is just wonderful. And on a day like today, where I've been busy all day doing research and answering comments and things like that, you know, I've been off today, but 
I never really feel like I get much of a day off anymore because I'm always working on something, whether it's research or making a video or spending time with the family. I'm just glad to be taking part in life for the first time in a very long time. I got a lot of ground to make up with people because I've been lazy in the past and this has really made it easier for me to, to be better about it. This way of eating has changed so much. But having something ready to go when I've been <laughs> fasting all day and I'm ready to eat, it's wonderful. Sometimes the meat at the surface will be a little drier than what's underneath the liquid fat in here. I'll just dip it in there. And it's like my, the best sauce I could add. But I hope this addresses a lot of the questions that some of you have had for me, because I wish I could answer all your questions individually. I just don't always get a chance to, and I know you guys don't get a chance to watch every single video I have. And once again, that's why I'm trying to make myself more available to you, not only because I love this way of eating in general, but because I have found my calling in helping people get healthy. Each and every one of your stories that tells me of how my story affected your life and you saw yourself in me where I was and that you've been able to climb out of the hole you were in health-wise, that you were able to lose that weight that you desperately wanted to lose, that you were able to cure those ills that you desperately wanted to cure and that doctors weren't able to help you with. It just means so much to me. I only hope I can continue to do it here on YouTube more as I know that there, there's a lot of worries about what's, what they're gonna allow people to say here. But once again, you can find me on other platforms that are a little bit more okay with what we say and I'm gonna keep sharing my story because I think the longer that I share it, the more it shows the evidence that this just keeps working and working. And it could change your life too. There are so many things that come from cutting out all the garbage that's in the food in our lives right now. The ready to eat, readily available, high carbohydrate stuff that's on the shelves in the store. Most of it is just designed to keep you spending money and it's not designed to give you the health that you need. It's not designed to give you the energy that your body needs or the raw materials and the vitamins that your body needs to survive. Every single thing most people need for their body it can be found right here in meat. Probably the greatest of the superfoods, though you don't hear that very often. I'm telling you right now, it is a superfood. Now some of us are gonna need to do a little bit of supplementation for some things. Depends on your age, depends on your health beforehand. Depends on what organs you still have in your body. Some people that don't have a gallbladder, like I don't, but some people find that they need to have ox bile supplements so that their pancreas doesn't get out of whack. I haven't had to have that, but some people do. I have, on the other hand, needed iodine, for instance, as I noticed that my TSH levels were a little high. And I also did a couple of tests that determined that I was low in iodine. Well, iodine is key for your thyroid to produce the right amount of hormone. I've been supplementing with iodine now for close to a year and my hormones according to my testosterone levels and other things that the doctors have looked at are in great shape now. I feel better than I ever did before too. If you have any more questions though, please put them in the comments for now. I will try to get to your comments. I will try to get to your questions. I wanna be here to help you guys. But the most important thing I think when you get started is keep it simple. The more simple you keep it, the easier it's gonna to be to do it because it takes a lifestyle change to really make this change. And if you haven't had that aha moment that you need to do something now or else, it really makes it hard. So I'll end it with that and I look forward to hearing from you guys. I'll see you next time. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat?